Europe is a land of legends. Civilizations flourished around the Mediterranean, and at their height they represented the frontiers of the known world. All these peoples were fascinated by a bird, whose habits they could only explain in mythological terms. For some, it was the only animal in Eden who resisted the temptation and kept eternal life. For others, it was the symbol of the sun, the firebird, able to be reborn from its own ashes. This bird has been on the earth for 10 million years, and it is still here, in the south of Spain. 7,000 years ago, in this Andalusian cave, a prehistoric artist painted the unmistakable profiles of the phoenix. This is the story of sometime travelers who are searching for a place to be reborn every year on the shores of their great lake, the Mediterranean. Today our phoenixes are found in the south of Spain in the Atlantic marshes of Doñana. They are the greater flamingos, the largest of the world's four flamingo species. Their common name comes from the Latin word flama, meaning flame, and the scientific name was given in recognition of its legendary character, Phonicopterus the phoenix. They live in the south of Europe, the southwest of Asia and Africa. Despite the fact that they are found far apart, there are only a few breeding places suitable for them. That is why they are wandering animals, true nomads. This is a different bird with an extraordinary design. Its body looks like a question mark. If the ancient peoples who made it into a legend had known of its biological reality, probably they would not have believed it. During the winter, Doñana is the main refuge for flamingos on the Iberian Peninsula. It is a mild, welcoming area for other wild animals, too. Some white stalks try to breed while others are passing through on their way inland. The approximately 80,000 flamingos of the Western Mediterranean now disperse over South Europe and Africa, fleeing from the cold. But when spring comes, the sun lets them know that it is time to start looking for suitable places to build their nests. They know that this may take some time, but they're not in a hurry. They can live to 80 years of age, and they know how to wait. Doñana is the place where a great river meets the sea. The Atlantic is deep here. The Guadalquivir River floods a marshland protected by an unspoiled beach that is more than 30 kilometers long. Hundreds of flamingos have congregated here already, arriving from Africa and the Mediterranean coasts. All are looking for the same thing, 
a spaced breed. It has been a wet year and so there is plenty of food. And it is possible that one group or another will try to nest here, as they have done in previous years. For the time being, the marsh works as a kind of information center for the groups that come and go looking for the right place. Large mammals often penetrate deep into the marshes, such as the many wild boar searching for food. They have become diurnal, and they devour all that comes within reach – eggs, chicks, and even water birds that they manage to catch. This is also the hunting ground of the world's rarest feline. Despite the activities of the lynx, there are still too many wild boar. The flamingos must be cautious. Almost every day, groups leave Danyana. We begin the great voyage with one of them. These nomads of the sun only travel by night, when it is cooler and the birds of prey sleep. Thousands of flamingos cross the darkness, as if they were part of it, to travel hundreds of kilometers searching for the Eden that, according to legend, they never lost. Not all the groups follow the same route. Instead, they make their own decisions according to the age and experience of their members. There's a string of wetlands along the Mediterranean coasts of Spain and France that are potentially ideal for nest building. But these are unstable ecosystems, ephemeral sheets of water that depend on the rains. The flamingos have been here before. They are nomads who only have each other, always ready to fly together by the light of the moon once again. At dawn, they reach the Great Delta, the place where the River Ebro and the sea come together, an amphibious part of Spain that has been created by the struggle between the sediment brought by the river over 20,000 years and the eroding force of the Mediterranean. Right by the sea, the cordon of coastal sand slows down the force of the waves, meaning that inland there are calm pools which are home to one of Europe's greatest refuges for aquatic animals. This place where the salt water mingles with the sand is the breeding place for 70% of all Adwan's gulls, a seabird that is native to the Mediterranean and which is one of the rarest and most threatened in the world.
Our flock of flamingos spreads over the distant lagoons and coves to rest and recover their strength. The extravagant anatomy of the flamingos is due to their feeding methods, which are unique among birds. They filter food like whales, trying to trap the greatest possible number of a very small animal, the brine shrimp, small in vertebrates that live in their millions in shallow salt lakes, muddy and highly salty places that almost no other animal exploits. The phoenix is the perfect machine for finding, capturing and digesting these tiny animals which live in such special places, and their color is due to this. Our phoenixes, after regaining strength and resting after their long trip, spend some time looking into the possibilities of this new enclave as a home for their nests. The best area for them has long been used to extract salt. There are no mud islands which are essential for nest construction, and the old posts that once lined the salt pans are the only places for the birds to settle. After the inspection, they are sure that this will not be the place where their young are to be born this year. When the veterans start to look restless, the others understand the message. Very soon, they'll be on the move again. When the sun and the nomads are the same color, the search will continue. The Flamingo's Odyssey takes place each year on the shores of the Mediterranean. Most of the coast is not right for them, and so they are obliged to fly further and further to find their scarce oases. After going north without success, our band of nomads now returns along the coast to the south, flying over the inhospitable landscape of the most important volcanic massif in Europe. Here at Cabo de Gata, a Roman salt works, provides the shallow water that these traveling birds are looking for. In the darkness of the night, these flamingos can distinguish from the air how many of their kind are there, thanks to the light pink that stands out against the dark water. In this way, they decide whether to stay or to continue their flight. It is an information and aerial reconnaissance system that is vital for them, more proof that their color is a tool for survival. The group flies over the regular olive plantations mixed with budding sunflowers. They know that they are reaching the Great Basin, the cauldron of salt, the incredible lagoon of Fuente de Piedra. It is a place flooded with light and which will play a crucial role in the lives of our phoenixes. The same Romans that created the legend of the Phoenix call this place Divina Fuente, divine source in the 5th century BC. It is Western Europe's largest salt lagoon. 1,300 hectares of continental water, rich in sodium chloride and calcium and magnesium sulfates. A vast mirror, seven kilometers long, undrinkable water of a thick black mud, a flamingo's dream. While the flocks arrive, all know that the search is over because they can see their companions performing the great red dance, the group dance that synchronizes mating 
so that the whole colony breeds at the same time. The pink color of their feathers is essential for the flamingos as it keeps them together. It excites them. It prepares their sexual organs and it synchronizes the pairing of the colony. Instinctively, they become involved in joint behavior, which means they cannot live without each other. This small individual seems to have come to the wrong party. This is a lesser flamingo, a different species that inhabits the lakes of Kenya and Tanzania. At some point, he has joined the wrong flock, which has brought him here. In any case, he does not feel shy and he dances along trying to impress one of those tall females. But in the colony at large, even for the males that can match up, it is not easy to get a female to bestow her favors. Courtship can last for hours. The overwhelmed females often have to literally flee from their overheated suitors. There is another problem. There are some voyeurs who watch the pairs and who do not hesitate to spoil their companion's good work. When the female puts her beak into the water and opens her wings halfway, the male mounts her, but not without difficulty. Finally, when he seems to be on the point of achieving it, the voyeur breaks the delicate balance needed, leaving the suitor all alone. The final moments are less than graceful, but it has been worth the effort. Despite it all, everything here always ends in a flush of pink. This year, too many flamingos have come to Fuente de Piedra. Furthermore, the water level is very high, and large parts of the islands have flooded.
Most of the great colony's nesting plots are already occupied, and late-coming groups are still arriving. The process of showing out the best sites follows a system similar to that of a hotel. The first to make the booking takes the place, and these are always the older animals whose experience means that they arrive sooner than the others. The crowding produces violence between those looking for a gap and those who have already got one. Individuals ferociously defend their square meter. The phoenixes become territorial and unfriendly when they build their nests. Their necks become a measuring tool that determines the exact distance at which an intruder will be packed. Even neighbors constantly set themselves apart in order to avoid the least invasion. The last mud nests are dangerously close to the shore. One small rise in the level will be a disaster. These circumstances, a recently arrived flock, mainly made up of young adults, decides to leave to breed elsewhere. More than 500 kilometers from Fuente de Piedra, there is a place called El Hondo, very close to a number of salt works where flamingos usually eat in winter. Here, surrounded by native palm trees and reeds, the dissident group is going to try something quite uncommon, setting up a new colony. This is very rare since appropriate spots are usually already well known to the flamingos. This is proof that they live from day to day, improvising each year in a changing landscape. However, settling in a place for the first time is a risky venture. While the majority rest and eat, a small committee of experts assesses the chosen spot. It is peaceful, there is food and a good island with mud for building craters. As meticulous engineers, they weigh up all the factors and evaluate every possibility. They have to decide whether it is worth the trouble of investing the necessary energy in a place like this. Everything looks good and, for the moment, a new colony of nomads is born. Shortly afterwards, they begin to build the first nests. While those who are still single begin their dance, there is no time to lose. Both here and at Fuente de Piedra, the system is the same. The idea is to build a small crater, a few centimeters high, to shelter a single egg. Thanks to the mud, when it is hot outside, in the cavity it can be up to 20 degrees less. Soaked, the damp mud produces an evaporation effect that cools the egg. Meanwhile, what interests those who have no partner is the dance. And so, all over El Hondo, birds woo each other with different choreographies. These great crested grebes appear to be saying no, but really their ballet means just the opposite. Shortly afterwards, in the recently founded colony, the females have laid an egg of about 150 grams and they have immediately gone to eat to recover from the effort, leaving the male to incubate the egg for the first shift, which could last six or seven days. During this time, the male will not move from the nest, only getting up every so often to turn the egg.
The males are loyal to their family, even from one year to another. Some days later in Fuente de Piedra, the wide open sunflowers tell us that the great moment has arrived. The little phoenix wrapped in fire peeps out from under its father's wing to have a look at the world waiting for it. The same powerful wing that traveled hundreds of kilometers using the strength of its muscles now gently protects the trembling white ball. The hatching coincides with the splendor of the sunflowers. As it is the flower of the sun, so the flamingo is the bird of the sun. From this time onwards, as the sunflower loses its yellow color, the little phoenix will undergo the opposite process. When the sunflowers go dark and bow their heads, the phoenix must already have its first pink feathers, or it'll die. It is a race against time a contract of colors. The little phoenix stands up straight at the top of its volcano, still showing some of the ashes of its rebirth. Only a few hours old, its first meal is the calcium-rich shell of its own egg. This highly nutritious meal is the first lesson in austerity of the long life it will almost certainly have. At the new colony of Elondo, the young have also hatched. The chicks' first 10 days of life are a critical period for their parents, since both remain close by, hardly eating. After this time, the weak pink legs of the young become covered with black hide, resistant to the salt. They can now come down from their private volcanoes and join the others. But in one of the great colonies, many rows, this mother has lain down too quickly in order to protect it, covering her chick and also the neighbors. When the adult bird rises, the foreign chick thinks it is in its own nest, and it fights with the native over the eggshell sweeties. The little one, stunned by the tremendous beating, stoically resists before the passive attitude of the adults who contemplate the scene without knowing what to do. In the end, it gives up. It's not worth dying for a little calcium. Nevertheless, the egg is not enough. Soon the chicks start to cry for more food. The adults listen carefully because they are learning the sound of their young's voice, that special sound by which they will recognize them in the future. In only a short time, their parents' lives will completely change, transforming them into what we could call a modern couple. They have only one child, they both work, and the most incredible thing is that they use a nursery. The two members of a couple often go off to find food at the same time. At this time, they leave the young bird in the care of the colony. 
The nursery is of carers who look out for the little phoenix's safety. And there are also trainers who encourage them to exercise their muscles. The nurses have to keep order by severely punishing the naughtiest members of the class. They look after the little ones carefully until the respective parents return to feed them. Second lesson, social life is crucial for a flamingo. You must learn to behave appropriately. On arriving, the parents feed them in an unusual way. They give them real flamingo's milk, a bright red liquid that is secreted by the glands of the adult's crop. After a few days, the Fuente de Piedra colony is full of growing chicks who demand more and more food. The great gray mass impatiently waits for food for hours. Because while Fuente de Piedra is a good place to breed, it's not so good for eating. That is why the adults have to fly for around 300 kilometers every day to eat and return to give their children baby food. This unique phenomenon only occurs in some colonies in Kenya and Asia, a feat that only the phoenix can achieve. Every afternoon at various places on the lagoon, individuals meet at the terminals for departure to far-off destinations along the south coast of Spain. When the sun divides the lagoon into two different colors, the shuttles leave. At a signal from the most experienced, the flights take off. The largest groups will head for Dunyana, where despite everything, there are good feeding grounds. Here they will once again filter the brine shrimp. They must eat to produce the milk that their young need, flamenco milk. This red liquid from the adult's crop is 1% blood from the adult bird. The presence of humans always means risks. Some time ago at Doñana, our phoenixes lived through difficult times. The lack of responsibility of man meant that tons of heavy metals were poured into one of the rivers that feed into the marsh. 
In a system like Doñana, the pollution spread like cancer, and the same channels that carried water bringing life also carried the seed of sickness everywhere. As occurred in that sacred Eden, death came in the form of a black serpent of toxic sludge. Machinery that tried to lessen the tragedy opened and closed dikes all over the marsh. Too much noise for the phoenix. For many of them, their long flight finished then. All night and the following morning, the adults returned to the colony after their long journey for food. The great gray mass impatiently waits for food for hours. On returning, each adult must seek their only child in a sea of large, hungry chicks who would not mind being fed by the parent of another. In the midst of the shouting, they recognize the particular sound of their chick's voice. They only feed that one. The persistent cries of the young stimulate hormonal secretion. Flamingo milk does not come until the crop is empty of food and so the two never mix. This is not then a regurgitation, but rather a true milk that is red because of the canthaxanthine that gives the adults their pink color. The alkaline water, the unusual food, the strange beak, and the ability to nest far from the food source have meant the evolutionary development of the production of milk in the crop. The system works because the flamingo only lays one egg it would not be a success with more hungry beaks. Sometimes the chicks do not have enough with their ration and they harass their parents, who are exhausted after their trip, begging them so insistently that the adults have only one option, to fly away. At this point of the breeding, there are enormous 50-day-old chicks mixed in with other smaller ones who will certainly have problems to develop in time before the cold returns. The larger ones are already alternating crop milk with the direct filtration of their own food. This summer morning, man has entered the lagoon. 
Everything has been strategically planned the night before. There cannot be a single mistake. In complete silence, like shadows, the beaters close the circle while the flamingos have already become aware of the maneuver. The goal is the nursery. It is necessary to direct the chicks towards the entrance of the trap. The majority of the adults flee, except for some brave ones, and others that cannot because they are molting feathers. The situation is very tense. The adults inspect the Yoni exit. They don't like it, but it is too late. The Grey Horde does not obey their leaders, and it advances towards capture. It is clear how many will be caught, the corral closes. Luckily for the flamingos, these are not poachers but biologists and vets who carry out a meticulous annual operation to ring the chicks. In order, the specialized carriers bring their chick to the different pieces of equipment that apply the rings, they take morphometric measurements and they check them over quickly. Almost everything that we know now about them is thanks to the work of these specialists. Wherever these phoenixes go in the future, there'll be someone who can read the ring from a distance and give information about their journeys, mortality or reproduction, and much more information besides. In a matter of minutes, the chicks are free with only a little fright and a new bracelet. The large chicks are already more than 80 days old, and their feathers are starting to look good. The infants' gym classes have become flying lessons, although some that were born late have more enthusiasm than physique. The powerful motors of the breast muscles must become as strong as steel before they attempt to take to the air. The formidable wings that will carry them halfway around the world are almost ready. The ones that are nearly prepared go to the practice areas where the instructors will encourage them to defy gravity. Almost playing, almost without meaning to, the first rise a few meters without daring to continue. Suddenly, one feels able, it lifts its legs, and it doesn't want to stop. The pink phoenix stripes are now showing under its wings. After him, some of his companions feel ready too. It is the hour of the phoenix, the triumph of the new nomads, the takeoff of the white shadows, 
who will travel through the nights of Europe and Africa over the next 50 years. such long trips, and they turn around returning to the colony. From today, they will receive less red baby food and they will filter their own brine shrimp. The sunflowers of the valley have bowed their brown heads, indicating it is time to leave. The end of their contract with the Phoenix. New cadets in a grey uniform will leave from the terminals this evening. With the haughty expression of their parents, the new pilots fly with the others as if it was something they did every day. Just as the ancient civilizations of the Mediterranean left their legacy in the stone, only the mud volcanoes remain as proof that the phoenixes were here. Nobody knows if they will come back again next year. If they do not find a suitable place, it is possible that they will never breed again. Despite the research, the mystery of the phoenix still lives on. Perhaps it was true. Perhaps the journey of their nomadic lives never ends. <laughs>